Hi, I'm Andrew Berry, and welcome to At The Benches YouTube channel. As you progress through your jewelry making career, you will invariably, if you, especially if you're working in silver or gold, have little offcuts of metal, of bits of silver, bits of gold, that you either cut off the ends of strips when you make up rings, as in here we've got some pieces of silver where we've used the disc cutter. And what do we do with these little bits and pieces? Well, a lot of you will simply put them in a pot and then send them back to the refiners to get some money back. And whilst that's nothing wrong with that, that's a great use of the silver, as we are creative people, let's just utilize these little bits of silver. Now, you don't necessarily need a rolling mill or anything high tech like that, or as expensive as that, but you'll need something to be able to melt these down. You can pick up crucibles and crucible holders really, really cheap. And in this film, I'm quickly going to show you how to prepare a crucible. Now, if you've got a small little torch like this, this is these little creme brulee torches, you're never really gonna get any success using a crucible and this little torch to heat it up. You're gonna need something that's a bit larger, like this sort of handheld torch. If you've got a sievert torch or anything like that, using map gas or a separate gas canister, something like this here, quite a big beefy sort of torch, absolutely brilliant. Even if you're using a nice little Smith's little torch that uses oxygen and propane or oxygen and acetylene, with the melting tip, the process is going to be exactly the same. Now, I've just got a brand new crucible holder. You can get a holder like this one, or you can get what's sort of called a whip, like a, an iron or steel whip. In this instance, I've got a small little square crucible you can get these round, you can get these in all shapes, you can get them larger again. The larger the crucible, the more powerful a torch that you need. This is a small little, I think it's about a two inch crucible. This is gonna be ideal for melting down around about an ounce, ounce and a half of silver. We can use these torches that I've shown you, apart from my little creme brulee torch, to actually melt down using the tools that I'm gonna to show you now. You're going to need some borax powder. Now this is essential for preparing your crucible and also I can't do it on the bench that I've got here so you're going to need a larger heat proof surface. I've already got one here that I'm going to bring onto my bench. This is a gorgeous little surround I made using some 12 inch 300 millimeter soldering boards. Simply cut up to make the size, the back and so forth. An ideal type of surface to do this work upon. We've got our crucible holder, uh, brand new, still in this wrapper. There we go, check that away. And this is the crucible holder that I have. It's got this little section here, I'll show you what this is for in a moment. But the main part is obviously the handle, the file handle, and then at this end, we've got the area where we can put in our crucible. Now, as I'm right-handed, I would have the pouring channel coming over to the left. If I'm left-handed, I would have the little pouring channel coming over to the right. Put it into the crucible holder. You've got a little wing nut here. Push your thumb up, hold the crucible nice and tight, the wing nut, and that will hold that nice and steady. Now, this little device here is useful if you've got a larger crucible. And the idea is there's a hole in the handle, this will locate in the hole, and then depending on the size of the crucible, this will come over to hold it in place, because when you tip over the whole crucible, there's a chance that if it's a big crucible, like a three or four inch crucible, the chance the crucible is gonna fall out as well. This just holds the crucible nice and safe. In this little two inch crucible that I've got, I don't necessarily need this. So that's what we've got. Nice, simple, little setup. Ideally, if you wanna use it for delft clay casting, some cuttlefish casting, or just simply wanna pour this into an ingot mold. Make sure the crucible is nice and safe inside. We're going to get some borax powder. 
Now it is important to follow this little step when you come to um, start to melt down. If you don't prepare the crucible, there's a chance that when you melt your silver into the crucible itself, it will stick and you'll never get it out and you've wasted the silver and you've wasted a lot of money. So this is what we're going to do. It's gonna be quite noisy because I'm gonna put the torch on now, but I'll explain as I go along if you can hear me over the sound of the torch. As I said, this sort of handheld torch is the sort of torch, the minimum size that you need. Obviously, the bigger the crucible, the more heat it's going to take to heat the crucible up and then the amount of silver. So something like this is no good for a larger crucible or even for something even sort of like an ounce or which is about 31 grams of silver or above. Using the Smith's Little Torch and the Sievert Torch, absolutely brilliant, you can melt at least two ounces. Okay, so we've got the borax powder. You can even use a little bit of a borax cone if need be. You can smash this. If you've got a borax dish like this, and as you can see, I've been using it and using it, the dish in theory is getting smaller and smaller because all this is borax around the outside. And if you wanted, you can put this in some nice warm water. This separate bit of borax on the outside here will come away. You can smash it up with a, a hammer or a rawhide mallet, and you can use the powder and the little chips to do this type of process, so you don't necessarily need the powder. Any type of borax, even use the cone. And once the crucible is hot enough, you can always put the cone inside the crucible just to coat and to line the inside. So the idea is what we're going to do, we're going to heat up the crucible so it's nice and red, we're going to get the powdered borax, we're going to sprinkle it, and we're going to sprinkle it into the pouring area here, and perhaps there will be some spillage on the outside, but that's fine because then we know the silver will not stick to the crucible. We want to make sure that the inside of the crucible here has a gorgeous glassy finish to it. It's got to be smooth, it's got to be full of borax, and it will enable the silver to really flow really nicely. So let's turn on this torch, make sure the torch is fully charged up with gas, first of all. We're going to heat up the crucible. It's going to take a little while to heat up the crucible because of the, uh, the crucible holder as well. It's going to draw some heat away. But we need to make sure that we get a nice little bit of heat now into this crucible. Don't put the borax powder on too soon because what you're going to find is that the borax powder is not going to fasten itself to the crucible but the flame is going to chuck it up into the air and you're going to end up with a bad case of dandruff. I'm not well, not necessarily dandruff, but flux all over your head and flux all over your shoulder. So warm it up. Once you can see a little bit of red coming to the surface, get a little pinch of flux and just gently put it into the crucible like that. Put the flame onto it. And what we want now is for the borax to melt and to glaze. And that's what you're essentially doing. You're preparing the crucible, excuse the borax floating around, but you're effectively glazing it. You're coating that inside with flux. You can see, you may be able to see in the camera that the center of the crucible now is covered, but not quite the outside. So we're gonna get a bit more flux Put that around the outside, making sure it's going to be nicely covered. And the inside does have to be completely covered with borax, so it's completely glazed. Nice healthy glow now coming from the crucible. Bit more flux around the outsides and also it is important to get that flux on that little pouring lip as well but once you've done this once there's no need to do it again once you get a brand new crucible in I would always do this straight away and always keep a crucible separate for the different precious metals that you're using. So I'd have a crucible specifically for silver. I would have another crucible specifically for nine carat gold. 
I'd have another crucible for 18 karat gold and so forth, 22 karat gold. Even if I had yellow gold and white gold, I would always use a different crucible for each color and each carat metal as well. So that's about the third or fourth lot of borax I've put onto the crucible. That's all we're really going to need. So now we can be sure that we've glazed the inside of that crucible. It's going to be all nice and smooth, nice and shiny. And when we come then to melt our silver or our gold, we know that is not going to stick inside the crucible and we're going to get a lovely smooth pour as we pour that metal out into the delft clay when we're casting it or the cuttlefish or even into a, a nice ingot mold to perhaps come along and put through the rolling mill or even just a hammer flat into sheet into wire the desection whatever you want also what you may find because of the heat is quite localized on the crucible. You may find the crucible will crack as well. It won't necessarily crack in half, but cracks may develop. And again, it is important that when you do come to put the borax, that you do fill in those cracked areas so the actual crucible does stay together. And this is the reason why we've got this type of crucible holder. It holds that crucible together should a crack develop. So we've heated up this crucible nicely, got a lovely glow about it. We've glazed the inside, completely covered now with borax. That's looking really good. That's looking exactly as we want it. You can see the shine all around the inside of that crucible, even just around the outside edge of the lip as well. And that's absolutely spot on, ready to use now when we come to melt our silver or gold. Remember to have a different crucible for each precious metal and also for each color as well, so you don't get any contamination. That is how easy it is to prepare a crucible ready for melting your silver and your gold down. Thanks for watching. My name's Andrew Berry and don't forget, please, if you haven't subscribed already, I'd love you to click the subscribe button underneath this particular film. Also, don't forget to click on that little bell icon to be notified when we put more films live on our YouTube channel. But in the meantime, my name's Andrew Berry for At The Bench. Thank you for watching. Take care. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.